Good morning, everyone. So I'm also starting a little bit of a coffee series with you guys. I'm going to start going over just some of my day-to-day -day experiences, and I'm, I'm going to go over some of the things that I cover in my videos that aren't in the morning, but I'm going to try to start like a series in itself. So with that being said, I'm going to pour some coffee. Definitely need to get started for the day. All right, guys, so I want to go over a few things with you guys this morning, um, just some things that I think that are uh, really important for the business. Um, we're going to go over catering, pricing, and having a menu. Um, first thing that I do want to start with today is I want to go over a website. Um, your website is one of the most important things, and the reason being that your website is the most important things is like your website is what all of your ads and your campaigns and your social media all funnels into your website and this is where you're able to sell whatever you're trying to sell, your product, your content, whatever it might be. And this is where you can do it at the price that you wanna charge as opposed to, let's say you wanna do catering and you go through a catering company, you might owe them 15, 20% of the catering leads. When it's through your restaurant, or excuse me, when it's through your website, it is all of your money. It doesn't need to be fancy or anything. I use GoDaddy still, which is actually one of the oldest websites, website creators out there. I feel like it's really, really old school. I, I don't recommend it. I'd recommend Squarespace. They're like kind of the new hip. Um, it's easy to use. It just lets you make it like a little bit crispier, modern looking. And people like that because it just, it's easy. You go in and there's one picture on the display showing a really nice picture and there's three, four tabs saying catering, contact us, you know, location and a menu. It needs to be very simple for you guys. Um, <clears throat> I really don't recommend paying more than 15 to max 30 bucks a month for your website. I mean, $30 a month is a lot considering, you know, you might only be getting catering gigs twice a month through it or, you know, unless you're selling a product, which probably isn't realistic right off of the rip. But if that's the case, I mean, then I would spend a little bit more money on your website. But more than I would spend on the website is the advertising. And we'll get into that in a minute because the advertising is what funnels it into your website. Once they're at your website, they found your website for some reason. So your website just needs to be clean and easy to maneuver at that point. So that gets into my next point. Actually, before we get to my next point, also, guys, pictures sell. And this is like kind of, I feel like this is the biggest like downfall to food trucks is like we all get out there and we're working our butt off and we're tired but you gotta take pictures it is like the most detrimental thing that you could ever do take pictures all day long just be like if you're sitting there and you got a minute that you're bored start taking pictures like have them in your your reservoir so that you're able to take those out whenever you want and just upload them it's really important to do that okay so going from the website this is my next point that i want to get into is google ads guys Google Ads is, it just drives your business so much that you can't even imagine. You know, it's like when you when you need to go find a new part for your car, what do you type in on Google? This part for my car. If you need to find the nearest McDonald's or Walmart, what are you doing? You're typing it in on your phone. Like everything is through a search engine. So like Google Ads, guys, I'm telling you, Google is the biggest search engine in the world. <clears throat> All you have to do is put like one to five dollars a day in it. So at the end of the month, like if you put three dollars a day into it, at the end of the month, it won't charge you more than ninety one dollars. And considering over time, your the amount of people you'll start to reach will really start to curve. I almost reached a half a million people in my first two years, <clears throat> showing that I was a, a restaurant. Excuse me, a restaurant. I definitely would recommend finding your exact niche. Now I have my food truck labeled as a mobile caterer. But it's like I have 127 perfect five-star reviews out of 127 on Google. And I'm telling you guys that drives so much traffic to my catering business. And the reason being is that people like, for one, that I'm on Google, I exist. Two, the reviews are everything. People see my reviews and they're like, oh my gosh, this is outstanding. I've never seen somebody with this good of reviews. Well, I don't have a, I don't have any employees. It's me and my wife. I make sure that my quality, my product, my customer service is flawless until I can build that reservoir of people that follow me. And then eventually over time, it's like you just, you don't have to advertise as much. But until then, guys, like you have to let people know that you exist. And I think that 
having the website and having the Google ads funnel to your website is one of the most important things. Um, uh, this is what I don't think under, people understand a lot of the times is just because you're on Google doesn't mean that you're actually like accessing to or you're reaching out to a ton of people. Um, if you're on Google, you have to run campaign ads and you can change your, your Google ad account to an expert setting um, to where it makes it to where you can like run detailed campaigns. But like I have two, two, two campaigns right now. I should have 10. But like my two campaigns, one of them is about the food that I have, ribs, brisket, pork, sausages, all the things that I offer. And then the other one is saying like catered, catering, catered. Um, it has all these different catering words in there and it's just because that's what I want. If somebody ever were to be like, I want a catering this weekend or I want to be catered or blah, 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 I pop up, you know, and that's so crucial. But I should have ads for my sauces, for my rubs, for the fact that I do everything from scratch. Like, guys, you can run a campaign for everything and all it does is funnel more into your website. So my third point that I'm going to get into this morning, pricing. Pricing gets a little little hard in the beginning. It's actually very overwhelming because you're like, okay, I just built this item and it tastes perfect, but you're like, I don't even know if I'm going to make any money off of it or if I have to charge $14 for this, how am I going to make money off of it? So pricing is everything. I definitely recommend you getting Google spreadsheets. You don't need to pay for Excel or any of that crazy stuff. If you go into spreadsheets on the very first page, just create you an inventory list, categorize it all, dairy, you know, dry goods, blah, blah, blah. And put every single item in there and break it down. If it if it comes in a three pound bag, break it down to the ounce, you know. And then you're gonna have to start to learn conversions of how many ounces to teaspoons and blah blah blah, whatever. If you if you really get serious about your recipes and you want them the same way every time, I have a book about 40 recipes. Everything is down to the tablespoon, teaspoon, half cup, whatever it needs to be. Because I don't like to think. I, as much as I can go out and feel each recipe every morning, it's like I know the customer would rather have that recipe. Exactly exactly the same so but pricing guys the spreadsheet through Google if you if you go into your inventory and you break this all down into ounces and everything and then on the second page let's say you do grilled cheeses for instance in your inventory you're gonna have your bread down to the slice the cheese down to the ounce blah 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 and so in your next page you're gonna create your grilled cheese spreadsheet it'll be like bread I use two slices so it costs this much like you just tie all these into the same sheet so that on your fifth sixth recipe you've got all the inventory over there and you're just able to type in and link everything to it and that way when you're like when you're going around let's say like when I'm at Sam's Club I have this spreadsheet on my phone if brisket went up 48 cents this week I can type in there and change how much brisket is and how much I need to charge and see if it's still worth it for me this week to even want to buy brisket sometimes you have to change your plan you know ribs got up to almost 350 a pound at one point and so I switched to chicken you know and I was able to switch to chicken because I created this spreadsheet I was able to plug everything in and realize that the profit for me was a lot lot better as if if I did it through um, when I do it through spreadsheet now going on over the pricing a little bit further is like you definitely want to cater but catering you need the website you obviously need your prices done and you need the Google Ads funneling, funneling everything into your website to be able to get business. Um, pricing for catering needs to be more expensive than it is for you going out. And the reason for that being is that you're using aluminum pans, you're using, you know, you're just, you're using probably utensils and you have to go buy maybe like spoons and, and tongs and stuff, even if it's from Dollar Tree. If you have eight tongs for a catering, that's $8. The aluminum pans and the lids might be $25 total together. So you have to price more for catering, guys. I price a dollar more per item. So like if my sides are usually $4 out there, I charge five for catering. I do it all per person, which is what I really recommend. A lot of people will be like, we do it per person and it'll be $30 a plate or $20 a plate. And then some people go, well, hey, we do it for 100 people. We, we do like $500. Me personally, I like to do it per person because the thing is, is some people like to customize it. Now this comes along with your clientele. As you get better clientele, they aren't worried. They want customized things and they're not worried about the price so much. In the beginning, when you're a nobody, you kind of got to get what you can get. Um, 
But like I, I just did a catering for the Broadmoor the other day and it was $50 a person. And I literally was like a $650 catering. They did not bat an eye because they knew the quality of my food when I delivered it and they, what they tasted, it was worth their time and their money. Now, if I would have dropped them off something and they were like, wow, we paid $50 a person and this food was terrible, you best believe you're probably going to get a bad review. So, like, everything just needs to be priced accordingly, guys. Like, I definitely recommend charging more, but if it's, again, if it's something that's not going to be profitable for you, then it's not even worth probably selling it. Um, let's see. I also, for my, for my catering, I charge for delivery services. So I charge like $50 to just deliver the food. If they want like full service catering where I put the pans out and the hot, ta uh, the hot steam, or excuse me, <laughs> the, I, haven't, I haven't even finished my coffee. I haven't printed out, I got to put out the burners and I fill them up with water or ice or whatever it is. And they're able to, for like three hours, the food stays hot or cold or whatever it might be. I charge 250 for that. So as you can see, it's like if I break it down per person, it might be $30 a person for them and it might come out to, you know, almost $2,000. But it's like if I if I have two gigs where I go out and sell at a rally and then sell at a brewery and that day I was expected to make 14 or 1500, you got to remember that now that you're not out selling, you have to charge for your services to go and do a catering all day. Um, because even if you were to hire employees and you were to cook all this food and have an employee run it over there, you don't know if the employee that day trips and drops the food out there. Or you don't know what can go wrong, so things can go wrong. Um, you just need to make sure that you're charging for your services, if you're, especially if you're the only employee. Once you get employees, definitely think about like maybe dumbing down or like not dumbing down, but like like dropping the cost of your items a little bit so that you can have more of your people that are a little bit less experienced than you go and serve that food. But I recommend you do everything for the first couple of years. The reason being is that you need to like get in there. You got to learn all the things that I'm trying to tell you guys, you know, and that's, and that's the definition of what makes a business successful. Does the owner really know how to operate and run a full successful business? Or do you just know one aspect and then you hire people for all these other, these other parts? People get lazy. People get comfortable and complacent where they are because it's easy. It's like, well, I'm making 40 grand a year and he's not about to give me a raise. Well, if you actually knew your worth and you got the company running well, you tell people like, this is what I'll pay you. And when you do better, I pay you better. So it all kind of t ties into everything. Um, and then this is kind of my last point that I'll make this morning, guys, like social media. I, I mean, you're going to hear me probably say it almost every single video, video, but social media is everything. Social media is what drives your business. It's what gets you new business. It, which it's, it is what shows the youth and 50% and of the people looking at your business, what you're doing. Are you in it? Are you posting every day? Like your social media, I can't stress enough. It, it's, I have, my Facebook has 71 reviews five-star reviews so between 127 on google and 71 on facebook like i have almost 200 perfect five-star reviews like people look at that all the time they come up to my trailer and be like people were telling me how good your truck was i looked it up on facebook i saw your reviews and it wasn't even a thought that i had to be here this week to try it so guys i promise you like the reviews the social media the google everything ties in you know, and I know it seems like a lot and I'm not showing you guys exactly how to do it yet, but you guys have just got to get into it a little bit and figure it out. Start with the website. It's super easy. Like get in there. You're going to take you two, three days. It's going to be a little overwhelming at first because who wants to sit in front of a computer, but you've got to learn that stuff, you know? You, you get everything in there and then at the same time, create that Google spreadsheet, break down everything into an inventory par sheet, make all of your recipes so you know that the, what the prices are so that you know, I can be, feel confident in posting my prices on my website and then on my catering tab for the website, when I send them over a quote and it's a little bit more than what they would charge at the trailer, but they're doing it for 50 people, they're not going to think about it. They're going to appreciate the fact that you charge for your services. You know, if it was really cheap, they'd almost be more concerned. And sometimes if it's too cheap, they're able to go with a corporate company. They don't have to choose a local small business like you. But I promise you, if you're you have confidence in your product and you do all these steps right and you're going out and you're always trying to find business. You pop into a local, um, we have this L3 Harris Techno Technology building over by my house. They have like 500 employees. Like I think every single day for lunch they have a food truck out there. If it brings you 500 bucks but your food costs are right, 
you can go out there for two hours, swing $500 and spend $80 on food and you just literally made 420 bucks, take out your taxes and everything. You know, $250 is not a terrible day and you should have another gig later that day. But if all these other things are in place, now you got people clicking on your Google ads that are going to your website, that are just seeing if you exist. So they might want catering, they might have a wedding, you don't know. These are all things that you need to put on your website and show that you can do. My wife has actually been a DJ for years and we're talking about actually doing like music and food because it would be amazing if we could charge an extra thousand to fifteen hundred dollars for another service that we offer. And I want to put that on my website as another tab like, hey, we do music too, because guess what? It's just another form of income, you know, and you guys can do the same. Like if, if somebody in your family or, or, you know, you got to be careful with family guys because you don't want to tie in too many people in your business because it can get fishy if people are like, oh, well, I'm not getting the cut that I have. But if you guys, if you have somebody that you really trust and that you know that you guys work together well together with and they've proven their point that maybe they make lollipops and they do this all the time. And you're like, I'd love to sell this out of my food truck, you know? And they're like, okay, perfect. I'll sell you these lollipops whenever you need them at this discounted price. Like, find those things that you can also add on because they're telling you they're huge. Um, I'm trying to think what else I could add this morning. So, like, if you're a... I've had my food truck for two and a half years now. And now I've gotten six sauces and six rubs. And I'm trying to take my food truck to the next level because I've realized like catering and doing the food truck is a wonderful little mix. When I did just the food truck guys, it was really daunting. It was like, it was just like maybe three days a week were decent. The other two, three days a week were terrible. Now it's like I get to go out two, three days a week in the food truck and cater two, three days a week and I'm making decent money doing it. But I'd also like it to make it where I have more forms of income. I'd love to be selling Amazon or even grocery stores that are local, my sauces. So my next thing that I'm getting into is like getting a nutrition printout for my, for my, uh, for my sauces, finding a bottle and labels and everything that I want to do so that I could put my logo on them and start branding myself even more. I'm telling you guys, diversification is the key to this game. It really is. But you could have the best product in the world. If nobody knows about you, I can't emphasize this enough, you're not gonna get business. You're just not going to. You have to be on Google, you have to be on Facebook, you have to be on these new words of mouth because the people that used to just go by word of mouth, they're getting older. They, they don't even use these, kind of the, they don't use the same word of mouth that they've always used either. They're on Google, they're doing new things that are keeping them in the game. My grandma's on Facebook, so I mean like guys, be on there, advertise to these people. You know, I, I believe in social medias, it's free though. You don't really have to be putting, actually you don't need to be putting money into it. I personally think it's a waste of time. I think if you boost a post, I would say that you should post three, four videos or things of content that day and post it like that every day. Why it's free? Why pay for the one ad to reach all these people when I could post four times today? You're not gonna annoy anybody, guys. That's the problem that I had to get out of my head that like people that don't like it or don't wanna see it anymore, they'll unfollow you. But as many people that you're reaching and the algorithm starts going where it's like, hey, this guy's posting all the time, that's when you start to re really re like reach your audience and your niche crowds because your Facebook is showing your algorithm to the people that want to see it. Um, And I'm trying to think, I'd like to almost even go over like a couple just day-to-day -day points that I go through. Like, okay, so yesterday, for instance, we had a catering gig. Um, it was Saturday, which typically, like I'd like to be at a brewery all day for Saturdays, but you know, we had a, this catering gig was really good, so it was worth our time. So we're out at this catering gig or whatever, and it starts to just hail, like, I mean, golf ball size hail, guys. And it, and it got to the point where I was like, I was a little concerned. I ended up busting my window on my van, you know, like my generators outside. I was afraid that maybe it was going to get wet. Um, like I had my window up on my food trailer and with the hail pounding on, I ended up having to like pull my window down because I didn't want it to rip up my logo on, on the trailer. So these are just all little things that like sometimes you just have to take account for that like weather can be detrimental to you too. You know, do you have cords that are running down to your generator? Is it freaking pouring outside like all of these things are they take into place you know um do you have like a generator 
cover you know i really don't know if you need a generator cover but it might not be a bad thing to have like if you're in a really rainy state it might be good to cover up all those ports and stuff you definitely don't want to get electrocuted i mean because grounding on a food truck can be a little bit more difficult sometimes than 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 uh just like a restaurant because the ground's in the ground so um also, guys, like I really, I, and this is something like obviously you won't be able to do right in the beginning, but I highly suggest getting another generator, maybe like after four or five months and you've been in it and you know that you've been really running it right. Like generators go out, they can break on you. And like we had one generator end up going out on us and I had to take it to a shop, it took them three, four days to figure out what the problem was. And then they got it back to me. Well, in that three, four days, like I missed eight hundred dollars thousand dollars each day you know what i mean where it's like i should be going out and selling and making that money if you have another generator you're just you, the other one's in the shop now and you're out there with the next generator i also really recommend you getting a generator that runs off of propane you know if you do gas it just gets gunked up a lot uh quicker the oil goes uh just gets even gunked up even more quicker like i sorry i meant to say the air filter and then the oil um if you do propane, it runs pretty clean. And typically, you get less power, but like money wise, like I can usually run four hours running about 60, 65 amps on my big 13,000 watt generator. You know, it runs 10,000 running watts propane, but it's like with everything I'm using, it's like I get four hours per tank. Tank at a discount at Ace with my EIN number, my business EIN number probably cost me only like. 10 to $12 a tank, you know, that's not bad. So if I go out per four hours, it's like 12 bucks as opposed to gas. You know, if you're guzzling a gallon of gas every, every, you know, hour and, or less, and it's $5 a gallon, it adds up real quick, you know, and like, and then you're carrying gas and let's say you're driving over to a catering and you whipped around a corner too fast and your gas splashed out. And now you got gas smell over everything. Like all of these th things happen, guys. I'm not kidding you. Like literally things happen. So like always prepare for the worst and like i said in my very first video which i'm gonna eventually make a series breaking each video and each point down um but like your business plan is everything and that's that's where i really think that if your business plan is set up properly you have more chance for success if you have on your business plan that you have your website down how you want to design it what you want to put on it what you want to be doing selling catering bottles sauces whatever it might be you also have to the Google ads in there. You need to have your sp pricing spreadsheets all broken down. You need to like have your routines, how, what you clean on your trailer every day. You know, all of these things are really, really good to make yourself organized for success because you don't want the health department to show up and they're like asking you some random question. You just don't know how to answer it. Whereas opposed to like, I literally showed the health department. I'm like, I literally have everything into logs, like maintenance, log, maintenance logs, cleaning logs, this, that, that, and the other. And it's like that way people know that I'm serious. And the health department was so impressed. I just got stung about two weeks ago from the health department at this food truck rally. And she was so impressed with how clean my trailer was. I built it out myself. I made it almost all stainless steel, but I like, I clean it from top to bottom every single day so that when I do get stung or somebody's walking up to my trailer, everybody notices that. And customers tell me all the time, they're like, wow, your trailer's so clean. And it's like, those are those type of things that now when they try my food and they're like, wow, the food was amazing. So you got clean, got a clean restaurant. Now you got really good food. Your customer service is outstanding. All you got to do that is a few more times over on repeat and you have them for life. You could even have somebody else that's a competition to you and they're just like, yeah, but I went in there and they just weren't as friendly to me that day. Like everything adds up and like intertwines together. But the four points I made today, website, Google ads, pricing, social media, start hitting those really hard guys. Don't make excuses anymore. It's just a matter of starting. Look, I don't like these YouTube videos. I don't want to sit here and stare at this lens in the morning right when I wake up. But this is what allows me to produce content for you guys to believe in my brand and what I'm saying as well for me to teach you guys what I'm doing and, and being successful at. You know, like yesterday we made $1,500. Like, I'm not kidding about that. It's way better than $150 if you're lucky working for somebody else. Like, screw that. You're worth more than that. You're you, if you're in this point watching this video, your organization skills, your everything that's led up to this moment is showing you that you're getting ready for this. So you need to sit down and start looking at like a business plan idea of how you want to write this out and don't overthink it. It can literally be a spider web 
little picture. And in the beginning, this is um, Philly cheesesteak idea. And then you're like, okay, I want to market. I want to create a website. I want to do this and that. I want two, I want chicken and beef on my menu. And I'm still only going to do peppers and onions, but I'm going to create two dank sauces. Okay, well, those all need to be in a spreadsheet. So just every little bullet point, it all ties in. You know, apparel, guys, like your clothes that you wear, it's so huge because if you're out there serving 20 people a day for 365 days a year, but you've never been wearing your logo and you don't even have like a, a any logo outside of your trailer that they can like clearly see from any angle, you're losing business. This is all repeat business that you could have. On the back of my trailer, it says, uh, so good it's sinful for my barbecue. And it's like, I have two big pictures, a picture of my brisket and a picture of my sandwiches. So when I'm in traffic and I got freaking 800 cars behind me staring at it, they're literally like drooling, looking at my website, or even if they're not, they're just like, one day they might see me driving down the road again and be like, dude, I gotta try that guy one day. I'm telling you guys, it all just comes in together. Cheers. I'm going to finish my coffee. Love you guys. I really hope that you like continue to keep striving and be better at your business every day. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. I also do want to start a question and answer series in the morning as well when I do this. So I can have a whole bunch of questions you guys ask me and I can just sit here and answer them for you guys. So appreciate you. Go get it.